Hey, hello gang. Welcome back to another episode of On Fire Fishing Hawaii. I'm your boy Joe and uh, this is a fish and diving channel. So if you like that kind of stuff and a lot of catch and cooks, make sure you uh, subscribe and hit that notification button. On this episode, I'm going fishing with my buddy Keith Char. We actually met in recruit class and we hit it off just because we just both love to fish and he's the one that actually taught me everything about oil fishing so it's nice that i still get to go out with him sometimes and go and try and catch some fish so we're gonna go try and go oil fishing but you know how that is it's you don't know what you're gonna catch or if you're gonna catch i guess that's why it's called fishing but we're gonna go and try no oil fishing even if the weather's not that good but let's go holo holo oh but before we go Make sure that you guys stick to the end because I'm going to show you how to make a a super cool, like a mock or imitation unagi recipe with a fish that I would like to say that almost every one of you guys at home probably caught, it, especially here in Hawaii. So, all right, guys, let's go. Holo holo. Oh my God. As you can see, it is blowing. I mean, it is rough, rough, rough. So we're just going to go out into the flats and uh, as you can see, it's kind of like a sandy with uh, some reef structure. So you want to go through these flats and we just dunk and hope we catch something, you know. So I'll show you how we rig it up. I mean, she's using a small BKN Gatamatsu style hook, like a size 22, 30 pound test liter fluorocarbon, about three feet and a really short lead line. And of course the eco, what I do is I cut it so that it's like a you know regular eco strip size and i try to bend it in half and then at least i put it through the hook at least twice so that way it really stays on the hook so if something wants to nibble it off or little crabs pull on it they have to take the whole thing especially for a wheel they want to suck up the whole thing and then that's how you catch it yeah, because it doesn't fall off you increase your hookup rate by a lot especially with oil all right time to get the lines wet remember dry hooks don't catch no fish so get your pole get your lines in the water and then now time to relax now this is fishing <laughs> yeah hana pa brother keep brother keeps on what you got what you got brother yeah get it here we go boo <laughs> oh mr balloon fish all right catch and release this bugger all right bait up and get your lines wet here you go and back to fishing all right we've been out here for quite some time and as you can see it is starting to rock and roll out here Start, the weather started to change got super ugly in fact we we're out here for like four or five hours so i just want to share that so that you at home don't get discouraged sometimes you can do everything right and still not catch anything so keep was like Man, it is getting ugly. Uh, let's just call it a day for real. Nothing's biting, so let's go just troll for uh, simple peel. So let's like pull up anchor and uh, just drag some lures. So here's Keith. We're just trying to get at least some fish for dinner. So nice trolling and bam, Hanapa, Hanapa, brother Keith again. And like I said, Keith is an unbelievable fisherman. But I swear, this guy is so lucky. It's the luckiest guy I know, man. But, all right, here. Here we go, Key. You got him. Here we go, here we go, Key. Big papillo, no whammies. Big papillo, no whammies. Oh! <laughs> oh, chumpy fish. All right, I know what to do with this. As we all know, these guys can be super slimy, so that's why I use a glove. And then once you cut off its head, and, or if you kill it, the slime goes away quick. So that's something to keep in mind. Especially that's why I think a lot of people don't want to keep them. To watch <laughs> Keith's face when I told him I wanted to keep it. I think I'm gonna like them. Yeah. Oh, you know, at least something. Here we go. I'm going to show you how to make this cornet fish. Um, it's actually, you know, people here call it stick fish, trumpet fish, like that. But 
In Japan, they call it Yagara. In fact, they're, these guys get a pretty good size, and we all caught them here in Hawaii, but no one really eats them because they don't really know how. But in Okinawa, they actually eat this. It's kind of a delicacy, super expensive. So I thought, hey, we have the same thing, just different color. Let me learn how to make it, and it's the meat is so good. It's soft, flaky, not fishy at all, very clean. So, of course, you're just going to cut off the head right behind the second pectoral fin, and then I just gut it. And then you're going to take out the little bloodline and all the guts real easy with your thumb, rinse it out. And then, as you can see, I'm going to just take off the skin. Since this is kind of a skinnier round fish, if you try to like fillet it, it'll be, it'll be pretty hard to fillet. So I, I've kind of came up with this technique on my own and found out it works really good with this fish. So what I do is I just start by um, getting the knife under the skin. You don't want to cut too much of the meat. You just want to get it started so that you can be able to peel it off. So you start at the front and of course you're going to just start peeling it down almost like a sock and then you're going to cut a slit all the way down the length of the spine on both sides of the spine. This will make it really easy to peel it off. As you can see right there, watch. It's super, you guys can all do this. Look, and there's no scales. You don't need to like scale it or anything, no pokies. So it's a very good fish to clean. Look at this, just peel it, slide it off, do the same thing on the other side, and it's, look at that, beautiful. Okay, the anatomy on this is kind of unusual. It has like a lowercase t spine. So it has a, the um, vertical spine, but it also has these little pin bones, like most other fish, to the side. However, the pin bones on these are really short and stubby. So what you want to do is cut down the spine on both sides of the spine, and you're going to stop. Again, stop at the pin bones. You're not going to cut through them. So some other fish, you might have to cut through the pin bones, and then you know how you, you take the tweezers and you peel all the pin bones out? This fish, here's the, here's the life hack on it. Here's the trick. It just cut it till you hit the pin bones. Don't cut through it. And then now you can just pull the spine and all those pin bones out of the meat. And that way you have this two perfect, nice cylindrical loins, which you make sashimi, fried, broiled, grilled, any which way, and it's going to come out really good. Just don't overcook it, like any other fish. Look at that. Yeah, yo. See? Show you just the same on the other side. Look at that. How easy is that? Easy peasy. Look at that. Clean. Ta-da. <laughs> Look at that. Two nice, clean fillets. Beautiful. Here we go. We have two beautiful fillets right here. And what I'm going to do next is just make sure uh, to cut it evenly. So in a restaurant, we used to use our hand just to kind of get good portion sizes. There you go. Perfect. All right, gang. So after I cut this up, you can see. I kind of eat in pieces. Get a Ziploc bag. Just gonna layer this in. Once you have it bagged, I'm gonna marinate it in this sushi unagi sauce. So this is a little different. This is a marinade, not like not to be confused with the thick sauce that you were gonna put over the sushi later. Okay. So it's best to marinate this overnight. However, I had to make dinner, so just a couple hours was good enough. Again, better overnight, but still turned out pretty good. All right. Perfect. As you can see in the video over here, I baked it, but if you to do this over, I would definitely broil it instead. It would give it a nice caramelized top, but still soft, juicy, flaky inside. Um, as you can see in my next session, I'll use the torch to get that crispiness, but you could always broil it. Okay, so we're gonna make our rice. We're gonna make our rice because we're gonna make a caterpillar, unagi, roll mm. and of course you cook your rice you add your seasoned rice vinegar i just buy the pre-made because it's a lot easier especially if you know short on time so we're just going to mix this up so we cook your rice then you're going to cut it so you don't want to just stir it you want to kind of cut it first let the seasoning soak into each grain of rice okay and we're going to have our avocado nice organic avocado from the yard right outside Nothing like fresh. All right, so this is an easy way to take out the seed. This, if you just tap it, twist it out, boom. All right, so if you're a professional, like <laughs> new on my other videos, he always 
cuts his avocados like this. Me, not so much because, uh, you know, I'm not as good as him with a knife. But just wanted to show you a different way of doing it. So you can either scoop it out, cut it on a cutting board, or you can do this fancy way of cutting it in the shell and then scooping it out and then laying it out nice. All right, so there's our top part of our uh, caterpillar roll, okay? And of course, like I said earlier, um, I couldn't get a real nice sear on it when I baked it. So what I did was I put the rest of the unagi sauce, then marinade on top, and I'll just give it a nice torch. Gives it that nice look and that grilled crispiness. So good. It's good kind of the smokiness, nice little texture, crisp to the top. Okay, so now this is my start of my caterpillar roll. So I start with the avocado on the bottom because that's going to be the, eventually it's going to be the top of the sushi, yeah, of your, of your roll. So you just want to layer it really nice, nice and beautiful, nice and even. And then you're going to put a nice layer of sushi rice right on top. You want to pat that down. And then on the other side, I'm going to make, a, basically they call it in Russian, a, a canoe. So you're going to kind of hollow it out. Press it in, make it nice and firm. Then I'm gonna grab my unagi, or in this case, the chumpy fish, and then I'm gonna cut it so it's not too big. And then you want it to be about that perfect size, okay? And then you put it right in the middle, and we're gonna sandwich this together. And of course, you could always use those mats, the bamboo mats. In fact, I think if I used a bamboo mat, I could've got this a lot tighter and cleaner. But because I was pressure time, I just want to to show you how to do a quick and easy, especially you don't need to be that good with this, you know, like your kids could do it. So here we go. Boom. Yeah, yeah. I know you want to poke your screen with your chopstick, right? So this is unagi sauce. See the difference? They're both unagi sauce, but this is really thick. So this is the one that you'll see in all the restaurants. They'll, you watch it, they'll drizzle it over your all your rolls. So good. It's salty, sweet, umami. Mmm, look at that. Yeah, yeah. Here we go, guys. Lick your screen. Mmm. I could put this sauce on anything, man. That'd be good. Yeah, yeah. Mmm, now it's time for the nigiris. So you're just gonna pressure rice, make it into bite sized pieces, regular nigiri size. And then this is how we're gonna use the rest of the unagi okay so you can i just made four because i had like four pieces left and here we go I'm just gonna lay this right on top nice soft juicy flaky crispy on the top a little smoky and then we're of course gonna finish it off with a salty sweet unagi sauce but use it sparingly because it is um very very strong so all right yeah yeah Woo! Mm, mm, mm. Yeah. <laughs> My wife thought it was uh, me taking pictures. <laughs> it's a video, you know. It is good. Oh my god, that's so good. Especially with the avocado, it's really creamy. How is it, Nomi? It's pretty good. You like it? Yeah. Is it soft, flaky? All right. How about you, son? Let me see. You want to try? Mm -hmm. Oh, whoa! You, you took it off the top, huh? Mmm! <laughs> I like the sauce. Oh, you like the sauce? Mm -hmm. All right. Tastes good? Mm -hmm. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Kid approved. So this is like, uh, basically, mm -hmm. unagi uh, nigiri, basically. Mm -hmm. Aloha gang, thank you guys for watching another episode of On Fire Fishing Hawaii. I hope you liked it and make sure when you catch another one of these trumpet fish or aka cornet fish, I bet you you can uh, find a way you can use it. Super good, super delicious. Um, also, thank you guys for always watching and commenting. I love all your positive comments. It just, it's like a big family, you know? So thank you for joining my family. And again, remember to fish safe and fish with aloha. All right, catch you guys on the next one.